Facilities that make this program possible are provided by the City of Highland Park. Programs are produced independently by members of the community. The City of Highland Park is not affiliated with the following program or the producers of public access programming and is not responsible for the content. The following program does not reflect the opinions of the City of Highland Park. And welcome to Commons Current Events Roundtable. Today we have a wonderful uh, guest and it's Dr. Lara Biaggi and she is a is currently the multicultural facility uh, faculty in the theater school at DePaul University in Chicago where she teaches her method of creative awareness for compassionate leadership and in various courses. And we're going to talk a little bit about breathe, belong, and believe, amongst other things. I am so happy to have met you at DePaul when you were doing a workshop the other day. And I enjoyed it so much that I wanted you to come on the show. And we would talk to our viewers and let them listen to many of the important things that you have to say. I want you to welcome you, thank Lara. You. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you for having me here. And, and thank you for yes. coming. We uh, met today at uh, the Bluegrass and had a wonderful lunch together. <laughs> and um, and we, we're now filled up so we can really <laughs> talk about the important things in life. And, and amongst it is a... And it, that I think that, um, we, in fact, we were talking a little bit about um, what's, what's going on, you know, in the world of texting and our, our, our children are being, are texting and no one is having any real serious warm conversations. And I think I mentioned, I'll see in restaurants continuously uh, groups of students constantly on their they're texting on their phone. They're probably talking to each other while they're sitting at the table <laughs> probably. and texting to one another <laughs> yes. instead of talking. Mm. Um, and I, I, I want to get your opinion about this. Why do students not feel uh, they don't belong, that they don't, uh, why are they not communicating? What's going on in this world? Mm. And I know you're from Italy, so you have a, um, a little bit of different perception of things. You grew up differently than some of the students and people in the United United States, you, uh, you're, uh, you're an exchange professor coming from uh, Italy to DePaul this time, right? You're going to be, you're teaching, so you're seeing a lot of American students. Um, how do they differ than, say, students from Italy? What is your, you know, concept of what's going on here? So I have been in the United States for 20 years. I have mostly taught in the United States, so the memories I have of me being a student date back to about 20 years ago. So um, I know from friends of the family that students who are now the age of my students at DePaul, 17 to 24, sometimes 30, um, have a different way to communicate. Like my generation um, was taught in Italy to communicate through an exchange of emotions. And you know, beyond the stereotype of Italians being very emotional and passionate. I think that it was true for my generation that we would connect to each other emotionally. And in order to connect emotionally, presence in person is quite important. I think that this generation has, of course, um, the need to connect emotionally. But because most of the connections are happening through social media without an actual presence, um, Emotions are l getting a bit lost you in the process. With in emails and talking emails and texting. Emails and texting and all, you know, the Facebook. emoticons. You know what the emoticons are? They're like this, this yeah. feet, right. So the emotions are so important that we have emoticons. Like every month or every other month, there are more emoticons that come out. Because obviously we know that emotions, the expression of emotions is important. But we now do it with a small icon. 
You mean like with a smiley face? No, like smiley face. Yeah. Yeah. And then yeah. you have, now you have yeah. strange things like palm trees and yeah. crabs and I don't know. You know, they're like <laughs> sort of like, which is great. It's well, fun. You know, actually, my grandson made an emoji that looks like me so I could say happy <laughs> birthday. That's an avatar. Yeah. That's, a that, that's something. Co oh, oh, it's so, it's yeah. not emotion anymore. Oh, my God. Yeah, no, it's, it's the next step to, oh. yes, right. Yeah. So I but have my own with my own. But face then, but it. then, but precisely so that that that's what an avatar is, which replaces the actual person in person. Oh my goodness! And so, because emotions are about feelings, and you can yes, you can get an emotion from a, an icon, but it's not the same as having the person there. So I think what's happening is that there's a replacing of one on one, like this, with. Um, icons of the person or icons of the emotions themselves and I think that that's very good in certain ways because it allows us to connect all around the world uh, quickly and so it's very efficient but when it comes down to engaging emotionally and becoming emotionally intelligent uh, we don't have a training ground for that any longer, really. Not so much. We, we kind of want instant gratification. Everything yes. is instant now. Yes. You know, it's not, you know, it's not the way it used to be. I remember when I was a little girl, all the neighbors used to come out of the house. They had little folding chairs, and everybody would sit and talk every evening. Yes. I, I, don't, I don't even yeah, know who I my neighbors that. are <laughs> anymore. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, and, uh, you know, if you don't uh, connect in some way, you know, uh, we used to connect with with our children, you know, pushing a baby buggy or something. I would meet neighbors, I would meet friends of the, the children. Nowadays, mm. I'm lucky to meet somebody, you know, it's, it's hard to meet people. Yes, it is, it very is hard to meet people. And then also people have this idea of time as scarce, uh, and so everybody's also running a lot. I don't know where uh, we're all running. Right, <laughs> right. But you know, there's also that, like when you meet people it's very difficult to say, hey, we're going to just be comfortable with this, you know, meeting. We're just, instead of being like, okay, I need to leave at this time. I have to yeah, come in at this time. Yeah, everybody's on their watch. It's They're a little, little bit like that, that too. Yeah. So that's also feeding on to the instant gratification that you were talking about, I think. And how are, and I think I mentioned something that uh, my grandson, you know, he had a um, prom and, and, and a lot mm. of the kids, you know, are having a hard time asking other people on dates because they don't know how to communicate. How do you, you know, teach communication? I know this, you're part of the theater school right now at DePaul, and how are you, um, Dr. Lara, I could call you Dr. Lara, Dr. Biagi, <laughs> <laughs> Dr. B, um, how do you communicate or tell kids, you know, you need to learn, how, uh, I think you have to teach them how to communicate all over again. You know, the things that they had, le you know, learned as children, they're not, you know, it, it, it sounds like the whole, they're turning inward. You know, like I said, I saw kids, mm. they sit together at the pancake house and no one talks to each other, they're just on their phones, mm. you know, texting or Facebooking or mm. I don't know what they're doing, but they're not talking. How do you, do, how do you teach this to them so that they can have some of those experiences that you had, that I had uh, as children, you know, mm -hmm. talk on the telephone at night. People used to talk to each <laughs> other. Yes, they do. <laughs> they did. <laughs> um, I, so communication comes from the same root as communion, which means to be together, to come together, right? So the first step in communication is to feel oneself. So that's why I bring contemplation and meditation and yoga and other practices that allow students to slow down, first of all, and to feel um, okay with the uncomfortability of being with their own selves. I think a lot of the texting and a lot of being projected outwardly onto the phone is this uncomfortability of being alone with oneself. I think that that's um, a challenge that a lot of my students and, and some of my colleagues have as well. So the first step is to connect with the breath and that's um, a really important uh, practice that I have experienced for myself. If you're able to breathe and you're able to be comfortable with yourself and slow down your thoughts, you become more aware of what you choose to do with your time. And other people. 
and other people. Because when you're texting, think about this, when you're texting or on Facebook, on Instagram, who, how many people are aware of how they're breathing? Not a lot, because you're just all constantly projected outwards. But when you and I speak like now, if you say something that is really, I breathe, right? There's this level of breathing mm -hmm. in in-person communication that gets kind of lost in the yeah. texting. And your eyes, I mean, when you're talking, I could see your eyes you become animated. Right. And when they're texting, and it isn't just, you know, it's interesting. You think it's just kids. Um, oh, no. It, right. I, my, own, my own husband, I hope he doesn't hear this show, but <laughs> he is so guilty of it. I mean, <laughs> we'll go out for an evening, um, as my director knows, uh, my show. We'll go out for an evening, and he, there he is. He, he's, um, he's not texting anybody. He's uh, just looking at his emails and his Facebook, and mm -hmm. he's not there. You know, he's not there socially. He's not, for some reason, he's into himself. He's not seeing what other people are feeling, well, what other people are saying. It's into himself, but it's also into his head. And this is, you know, to connect to your previous question about connection, is that a connection is, a, is about being comfortable being where you are in that mm -hmm. moment. Like you and I are here now, we're right. comfortable. We're right. not thinking about what we'll do later. Right. We're not thinking about what we did before. We committed. Worst time for I this Facebook. Half, oh, yeah, or or like, or something just actually, hold Facebook. on, let me just. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so that's what, what's happening is that this feeling of comfort in being okay where you are, instead of feeling like you're, you could use this time to do something else, and get this, this fake idea of productivity, um, like uh, relaxing and connecting and communication is kind of a waste of time. We have better things to do. Nobody talks about that. Mm -hmm. But that's really the idea. When those kids are at the pancake house because they want to get together, their idea may be, yeah, we're together, but let's be productive on the phone. Yeah. It's a different way but to... Are they, don't, don't they want to hear what each other's talking about? Well, yeah, but they Instagram each other about that. They're doing... <laughs> they're, you mean they're sitting at a table. They're taking pictures and, and immediately sending them to each other. Yeah. It's a diff they're wired differently. Yeah. Do you know, I'll go out with people, <laughs> even my... My, one of our kids and our kids they right away they get the food and then they snap a picture of the food <laughs> i forgot to do that <laughs> <laughs> but we didn't snap our, the blue crisp we didn't snap our, our blue crisp pictures. no we did it but um but i, I don't understand <laughs> they're okay they may want to show the food but then they don't get off the phone and look at i mean look what they're missing by us like we're talking right now we're showing eye contact we're showing emotions you're hearing what i have to say i'm hearing what you have to say isn't that more interesting than than grabbing one's phone it's more interesting but it's more difficult because when you and i meet like this like at lunch we have or now even yeah. we can come through conflict like you may say something that I don't agree with, or I may say something that you're not completely agreeing right. with. And so there's an opportunity to know each other better by meeting, uh, you know, between our differences. Mm -hmm. But when you're on the phone, if you don't like something, you just swipe it. You don't have to engage. Mm. You can only, on a phone, you basically choose to engage only with what works for you. And that's where so many, you asked me earlier about conflict resolution. I think this is why... You can say, I like, I don't like, or put, again, one of those emojis, right, on uh, right. I love or I don't like, or, mm -hmm. yeah. But here, this, this is like an emotional gym. I have to become fit emotionally to be able to sustain the fact that we may disagree, but not hate each other. Mm -hmm. That we may not have the same views on gender or, or politics or race, or, but it, we don't have, we can still have... Right. A conversation. Yeah, that's what people are. That's why people, I think, have this so much anger in politics because, I mean, you could disagree or you could agree. Like we even talked a little about politics today. You know, you may like the president or you may not like it, but you know, may not like the policies. But people can't even talk about that. Oh, yeah. I don't like him, so therefore I don't want to hear anything about him. You yes. know, instead of discussing, right. I don't like. Uh, you know, I don't agree with the president because I don't like his tax pro uh, program. I don't like his other program. But, you know, just, you know, I don't like him. That's it. We don't want, I don't need to talk any further. That's it. And that's what it is. They, it's like instant gratification. You either like him, don't. That's it. There's, there's black or white. There's no gray areas. Mm, there, we, yeah. There's no time for discussion. That's right. That's, that is right. So when you think of, and, and, you know, this is a generalization. There are also 
many people in the younger generations who do this, who meet, you know, like it's not everybody, but, right. but the majority. I'm talking about a lot of adults, right? But, uh, the majority of people, yeah, right yeah, there, that's I happening. Know. Because it's more difficult. It's more difficult to engage. It's more difficult, and that's why I love theater and I love teaching theater, um, because theater is a way for a human being to train in emotions, right? Because think about it, an actor, but also a play playwright, thinking about the characters, a director, everybody who's involved in theater or performance in general knows the importance of being flexible emotionally. Mm -hmm. But outside of our field, it's very difficult to, um, to really find a place where you are offered an opportunity to learn how to be emotionally flexible and intelligent. And the, um, this type of communication definitely facilitates, it's fast. Like you see people on the train even, everybody's, go even, even on the phone itself, everything happens really fast. If you look at people's fingers, it's not like people reading the newspaper or something. They really just go fast and then they click here and then they swap over there and then they swap over there. Yeah. <laughs> it's right. And it, years ago, <laughs> I would see people coming in with a newspaper on the train. <laughs> you know, you bring your, your Tribune or your Sun Times or whatever, and Wall Street Journal. Now people are just uh, looking at the news. They don't even want to look at the whole newspaper. They're just looking at like little yeah. square and that's it. Okay, that's enough. I, I looked at the news today. I mean, it's like... The generation is, is kind of lost. And, and you said something which really, I really, I couldn't believe this. You said one out of 12 students make a suicide pact. Oh, my yeah, God. It's I, a, it's when a, I heard that because in the you whole said of they the don't United feel like States. they belong. Yeah. What is that about? Well, I don't know what is that about for the individuals. I mean, one would have to go into, uh, you know, the lives of different people. It cannot be generalized. But... 70%, this is a study from the Harvard Medical Journal from last year, from the Harvard Medical School that said that um, about 70% of the adult population in the United States and Canada suffers from loneliness as a chronic disease, not just mood swings or things like that. And I think those are connected. I think those are connected. I think that there's, because of this lack of connection, mm there isn't really a feeling that you can open up, especially to talk about negative feelings, right? There's, uh, everything has to always be sunny all the time and always have to be, oh, it's gonna be okay, it's gonna be okay, right? If you have to really talk about heavy emotions it, and if apparently your life is great, then there's even a feeling of guilt in talking about loneliness or depression. And, and so then I think we, we even talked about there's so many things offered. And, and Pat, I think we talked about even, I said, gee, how do you like Chicago? Yes. And you said it wasn't that. And most people say, well, Chicago compared to New York is very friendly. But then you said people, if they don't know you, they don't, you know, like small towns. I'll go to Lake Geneva, Wisconsin. I'll go into a store. And people right away said, hi, how yeah. are you? And they're not even pushing the merchandise. They said, sit down, let's talk. Yeah. You right. know, small towns, I, you know, I talk. And we sit there and we have a, before I even purchase something or I don't purchase anything, right. I have a wonderful conversation with people. Right, right. And here it's just people just want to get going, going fast. Yeah. They're not looking to connect. No. That's the word. Connect and, and, is the word, yeah. And that may be, that's why there's, you're right, loneliness, connection go together. Yeah, they do. I, they do. And uh, it's, um, it's a combination of time and space and fear, um, metropolis, you know, urban environments. Uh, there's, there's a general, not, not for everybody, but there's a, there's a general um, awareness that people have, you know, who's around, what's going on, you know, like I should go fast. Very rarely people stroll by in the city, you know, mm -hmm. um, unless they are with their friends and families. Mm -hmm. So they don't need to connect with strangers. Mm -hmm. The idea of connecting with strangers is... Um, is really not um, common. So this morning coming here, I was on the L, and I saw a seat next to um, a woman, and um, I just wanted to sit next to her. I'm not, not particular. It turns out that we're both Italian. <laughs> That's interesting. Yes. And wow. so she was like, wow, you're sitting next to me and you're Italian. I was like, well, no wonder. <laughs> but I mean, it, this is just a joke. But, you know, um, I don't know why I felt the calling to, to sit by her instead of choosing a remote seat down the, mm -hmm. you know, the car by myself. By myself. You know, because I just, I guess I, I felt it, especially with this gray weather today. I don't know. <laughs> 
But think about it. Like if you go on a train, you're not going to sit next to a person to start talking. You're going to sit in an empty seat if, you know, like. Well, yeah. But, you know, it's interesting that you said that because when I was in England, um, and which is, I think it's great. And, I've, and, I, and I think it also happened when I was in Israel, too. I went to a restaurant. We took a table, my husband and I. It wasn't a two-top. It was a four-top. And I was asking, would you mind if two people can join you? Because it was pretty crowded at the restaurant. I said, that would be wonderful. And they told us, they came to join us, young couple. They told us where to go, you know, things that we never even mm -hmm. thought of. We had such a wonderful conversation. And they don't seem to do that in the United States. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it must be mm -hmm. more common in Europe when mm -hmm. there's a, when you're and not sitting at a little tiny two-top two table, but a four-top. And I, yeah. I, I love to have people join us. I you enjoy know, that. I think that there's a, a, a great value placed on individuality here. And I think this is also one of the reasons why so many people want to come to this country. If they come from an environment where their individuality is um, not respected. You know, um, so I think that there's there's a value in an individual space and individual, right. you know, your personal time and privacy and all but of that. But then I, I could see where loneliness and comes that's, in. And that's that's it. And that's it. That's that's the um, you know other face of uh, of the metal of the coin. You know that that's individuality can then become a nuisance. Like if I unless you love me or we're family, I'm not going to really reach out to a colleague or an acquaintance to say, hey, I'm feeling really lonely, I need some help. People f freak out. <laughs> They're like, well, you should go to therapy, you know? <laughs> there isn't exactly a communal understanding of support unless you're family or really closely related. And I think students, sorry, just to finish, yeah. students, yeah. especially when they move away from family, they move to a city like Chicago and they mm -hmm. are in a dorm, yeah, um, you can imagine the, the multiple levels of isolation that that can. Well, isn't there like um, fraternities, sororities, or even if it isn't a, a social fraternity or sorority, they could go if they're like say uh, engineering. There's engineering fraternities, or where they can go and meet people. Like yes, uh, there are. Eat, and the cafeteria. I, you know, I am not a. The I'm dorm. not part of a sorority or a fraternity, mm -hmm. so I can't really or speak to that. Or the dorm itself, I mean. Yes, but um, you you will be more prone to go if you don't suffer from loneliness. Do you know what I mean? Like if you, if you feel lonely, when you're already feeling lonely and when you're contemplating suicide, you are already remote from... Mm -hmm. Well, they, they from to, the yeah. idea, right? Because it, because it is a mental and a psychic. But you want to get them before they get to that point. Correct. You know, because uh, is, uh, do, do teachers or the professors or any of their, you know, ever see a student that, um, you know, what happened just recently in uh, Texas where the student came in, apparently he was having hard time connecting with the other students yeah. and before it becomes so drastic did they start shooting or you know to the point of severe loneliness and depression and suicide isn't there any way that the, anybody as far as the professors can see that there's something not right about the student that maybe they need to be taken in and talk to and tell them, hey, let's you know join us. We're doing a theater group right now. I think you would enjoy being part of our group. Sure, sure. And the s professors do that. Professors have an actual legal responsibility if um, they notice unusual behaviors in the students or if the students report that they are contemplating suicide or if they're depressed, they actually have to report it. Mm -hmm. um, but you want to catch a student before they get to their yes, point. Yes, but, but the question, like, I, I suffered from loneliness immensely, but I would never show it in the workplace. So a lot of people w will not display those true colors when they are in a social setting because it's shameful. There is a shame attached to not being productive, to not being happy, especially if you're a student or if you're a professor, right? You're supposed to be in the prime of your life and, you know, having, mm -hmm. you know, the best of your years. I don't know. Right? So sometimes it's really hard for a student who, you know, got into a private university or a public university who has a chance to study and 
you know, to say, hey, to admit it. Does he have, they have problems, he or she has problems connecting with another student. So right. if you see another student, uh, you could, you know, ask, hey, you're, in, you're going to, the, are you going for lunch? Is it okay if I join you? I mean, they won't even get to that point. And I'm wondering if part of that has something to do being yeah. on the phone all the That's time. It. They can't, they don't, That's they, they it. stop them from connecting. We're going full circle is that a lot of times people are, it takes commitment to care. It takes a level of commitment mm -hmm. and courage to care because you're saying, I'm going to commit time, space, and care to you. And, mm -hmm. and sometimes people are very busy and sometimes they're apparently busy and they want have that or they, or they or they don't know how to or invite. They don't know how. They, they're, or they're, they're shy. Or they're, they're shy. They don't, shy. Know. They exactly. don't know how to connect. Right. Or they may yeah. think, well, this person is acting strange. Maybe they don't like me. They right. don't think that maybe they're that they are having a problem. problem. They may think I I am not good enough because they yeah. always look strange and they right. don't really. And so nobody. So meanwhile, no one connects with one another. Yes. And what you do at tell a little bit what you do at DePaul, and yes. you also wrote. You're writing a book? I'm writing a book, yes. I'm writing a book called Breathe, Belong, Believe. And, <laughs> and, and that is about? This is about trust. Mm -hmm. It's about trust. And the breathe is about the physical level of existence, so how we take care of the body. Belonging is about the emotional, what we were talking right, right. now, connecting. Be and belong. believing is about a more mental, um, intellectual idea of believing in yourself. So the three of them are three aspects that are interrelated. But they're all about trust, and about trust that we are um, all destined to be happy. We're all destined to have a good life, and we can achieve that if we are able to take care of these different aspects of our own spiritual self. Um, what I do at DePaul in the theater school um, as the multicultural faculty, I teach courses mm, that have um, as a focus self-care. And I do that uh, through personal storytelling. So I work with stories. I ask students to create their own stories about themselves, where they are the characters. And they can um, really talk about themselves as they are, or they can imagine that they are different characters. They can be astronauts, or they can be detectives, or fairies. And, um, so it breaks their silence. It makes yes. them feel comfortable. Yes. And then they, some after that, maybe they start connecting with other.